And what's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. It is your boy Cheap Ludes and I'm back with another video. So today we're going to be talking about Season 5 because we're about a day and a half away from the new season starting. So I'm going to be talking about predictions and things I expect to see and specifically players I expect to see in Season 5 on Friday. So if you're new to the channel, subscribe. I know I haven't actually done anything yet so you probably won't do that. But man, stick around towards the end of the video and then you can subscribe so I'm gonna start by talking about triple threat now the reason I'm picking triple threat first is that's kind of the easiest to predict out of all the things so right off the bat uh, triple threat rewards have been relatively good um, Terry Dissinger and Byron Beck were both really good um, even back to season one like Buck Williams uh, was really good so was Brian Winters so a couple guys I think we're gonna see are if you remember last year Rudy LaRusso I think that's definitely a guy we see. Um, Larry Siegfried is another guy. You don't have to know anything about that guy. Just hear his name, and you can be like, yeah, you know what? That actually sounds like a guy who would be in triple threat. That's exactly correct. He was often referred to as the prototype for the mar modern NBA guard, which is not accurate at all. But either way, Definitely a guy I could see happening. Another one would be Lenny Wilkins. I think we are going to get a couple point guards. Well, at least one point guard as a triple threat vault prize. Just because we haven't got any for a while. I don't even know if we got any, period. I feel like we might have, but it doesn't matter. Lenny Wilkins is a perennial triple threat reward guy. Um, the other guy would be like Spencer Haywood. These are all dudes that they constantly put in the vaults or triple threat online rewards just something of that nature these guys are always reward cards because no one would buy packs to get larry siegfried or rudy larusso but Ludi, rudy larusso would probably be the best out of the bunch very similar to like terry disinger small forward shooting guard big body i think he's like six seven or something played in an era where they still had belts on their jerseys you know you know the vibes for the tt as far as the season rewards go um, kind of hard to really determine because they've kind of fluctuated. We've had some like current players, some recent players, some guys that will go back to the early 2000s slash 90s. Um, so I don't know. I'm just feeling Rex Chapman for some reason. I don't know why I feel that way, and it's probably not the case, but that or Joe Smith. I don't, I don't know why, but I just feel that. Triple Threat Online. Now, these guys have a little bit... They're a little bit well more well-known guys than the Triple Threat Vault, so we could see anybody in here. I think Sam Cassell makes the most sense. We haven't seen a point guard in a little bit, and I don't know why, but Sam Cassell just screams Triple Threat Online reward. I, whatever. Joe Dumars would be another guy I literally would not be surprised to see pop up. I think he's been a Triple Threat reward the last, like, two years, so why not make it three? Um, Reggie Theus is another guy that I think would be interesting, but because he's a big point guard, they do often try to put him into packs, so another guy we could see there, but he's sometimes like a token reward and stuff, um, so don't be surprised to see Reggie Theus and his sweet Jerry curl pop up. Another one would be Sean Elliott. We are due for a new Sean Elliott card, and I think he either comes through in like Domination, Spotlight Sims, or most likely Triple Threat Online. I think all four of those guys would be pretty good. I think Dumars would probably be the worst. But if they juiced him up, he could be pretty good. Like, Jack Marin is incredible. Terry Cummings is just meh. He's mid, basically. Um, Reggie Theus would probably be really good. They're probably not going to make him shoot very well, but it is what it is. He'll basically be like a, a free Penny Hardaway. Maybe he has clamps and stuff, so that makes him a little bit better. But now let's go on and talk about Domination. So, Domination's tough. Um, I think we do get another Domination. What that is, who knows. Uh, but I think the reward is probably going to be pretty good. Antoine Jameson was one of the best rewards that we had this season, so I could see that happening again. Um, Brandon Roy would be someone I wouldn't be surprised to see over here. Brandon Roy is due for a new card, and I think um, that if he's going to come up anywhere, it's going to be as a reward. So Brandon Roy, maybe Amari Stoudemire, someone like that. But I don't think they go double power forward. We can also see Reggie Lewis pop up. Spotlight challenges. All right, so as far as the spotlight challenges, like the reward cards have been pretty interesting. I'm just going to rifle through a list of random, like, you know, when you finish Pacific Division, Northwest Division, etc. Those, you get that Amethyst, that Evo's into a Diamond. <sighs> Guys that I think we're going to see, like Kendall Gill... 
Dan Marley, who I love Dan Marley, so I would be stoked about that. Trevor Ariza would be another guy that I wouldn't be shocked to see. Doug Christie and Nick Anderson, two guys that are somewhat 2K meta cards, but they're not going to sell packs on their own. Um, we could see either one of those realistically. James Donaldson and Rick Smiths, like guys like that, maybe like Brian or Byron Scott, Kevin Willis is a big man from Atlanta, Thabo Cephalosha, possibly Hakeem Warwick. As far as for the spy, the final, I would say probably Quentin Richardson or Lance Stevenson. So for Ascension, I'm not going to talk about these guys for too long, but um, just some random dusty old guy like Lucius Allen from the Bucks or Fred Brown from the Supersonics or like Calvin Murphy. <laughs> from the Rockets, he's five foot nine. No one's gonna want that card, but it just makes sense. We, we're due for a guard. As far as the card that I think is gonna be the end level forty, I've heard a lot of different cards tossed around. I've heard, I think DBG said Kareem and Vince Carter, which maybe I've heard Tim Duncan thrown around. I don't really, nah, I don't think so. Um, I've seen Embiid thrown around. That's actually really interesting. But we did just get multiple Embiid cards, so I don't know if they do that. Um, that one's really way too hard for me to speculate. Like, it wouldn't surprise me to see Zion. I'll say that. But he's also, like, a pack seller. As far as limited goes, um, we are due for a wing. So, my guess is between three guys, and that's going to be Beasley, Rudy Gay, and Andrew Wiggins. Would you be, like, surprised at all to see 97 overall versions of any three of those guys, especially in limited? No. And they'll all be really good. But those three guys just make the most sense. They all play basically exactly the same, too. I think DBG said DeMar DeRozan was his pick. That probably makes sense. He might be right about that one, too. I think we get a slashing type or wing regardless, though. If it's not one of those four guys, I don't know who it could be. But that, it just makes the most sense. As far as Unlimited, I think we get a point guard. We've already got Paul Pierce, who was a small forward. Or, yeah, small forward. Uh, Mikhail, who's a power forward center. Ewing, who's a center. And then, I feel like I'm missing one. Igudala, who's a shooting guard. So, once again, I've heard DeMar DeRozan tossed around. He makes sense. I think Beasley, Rudy Gay, and Wiggins all make sense, too. Um, but I think we get a point guard, and I could see him doing John Wall, like Tony Parker, or Penny Hardaway. I think Penny Hardaway actually makes a massive amount of sense, because he's not selling packs on his own. So, putting Penny Hardaway in Unlimited, and him having, like, clamps, and, like, his release on quick... He's going to be a good card, but not an overpowered one. As far as the token market goes, that's going to be a tough one. I think for PDs, it could be fucking anyone. Like, I have no idea. Shout out to the people who tell me not to swear. Uh, Mo Cheeks actually makes like an absurd amount of sense, though. I, I don't know why, but he just screams pink diamond token player. Uh, either him or, like, Reggie Lewis. Uh, as far as Galaxy Opals, like, I could see them throwing Reggie Lewis in here, too. Um... I've heard a lot of Tim Duncan talk, which he actually is perfect for the Opal token reward. Same with, like, David Robinson. And Kevin Garnett, actually, I think we may legitimately see KG in here because I don't think he sells packs on his own, so I think putting him in the uh, token market would make sense. We could see some current guys, too. Like, we could see, like, a John ja Morant or somebody, but with his explosion in popularity, I think they're going to save him for packs. Um, I've heard someone say Eddie Jones... But I generally think that he's such a meta card that I don't think they're wasting that on the uh, token market. So, once again, really hard to try to guess who's going to be in the token market. Same with the exchange, dude. I have no idea. Like, no one would have guessed Jim Paxson. Ron Harper sounds like someone who could be in here. I Or Derek Harper, one of the fucking Harpers. I, I don't know. I really got to stop swearing before I get demonetized, but I just don't care. Um... Yeah, I don't know. The exchange is tough. We are going to get a new series of duos. So I wanted to talk about cards that I think are going to get duos. Duos are kind of rough this year because you can't upgrade badges with the duos. They only upgrade stats. So, But I think we get one with Clyde Drexler. I think a lot of the Season 3 guys are going to get duos. So Clyde Drexler would make sense. And then Double Take Hakeem. I don't think they put Clyde with Opal Hakeem. I think it'll be with this one. I could be wrong, and it could be with Op Opal Hakeem and, like, boost Opal Hakeem's, like, three-point a little bit or something, but who really knows? Um, next would be another... Th a bunch of these are going to be Season 3. I'll prep you right now. Bama DeBio, um, who's still, like, a really good defensive card, and I think they 
pair him with Jimmy Butler, Bam goes up to like a pink diamond. This makes sense. Like Jimmy can have a couple of his stats boosted, maybe like ball handle or something else. Um, and then Bam can go up quite a bit in like shooting stats. Next up, we got Jamal Murray, who I don't think he's going to be getting a new card for a while. So this actually makes like a lot of sense as well. And Pink Diamond Jokic. I think we are going to get a new Jokic card sooner rather than later. But I think in the meantime, they'll placate us with this dynamic duo because it's something that 2K does pretty frequently. Um, now, next up, I don't know if it's going to be this Joel Embiid or the Pink Diamond Moments one. They're basically the same cards. So it doesn't really matter. But I think he actually gets one with Inferno Ben Simmons. Now... I think this will probably be the one that's like the showstopper. They did this last year um, with Opal Ben Simmons and Opal Embiid. And it ended up being one of the best dynamic duos we had gotten all year. And I think they may repeat that again. Plus, it'll bring both of those cards price way up, especially if they boost Ben Simmons 3 at all. Um, yeah, Pink Diamond Tatum and Pink Diamond Jalen Brown. They typically give like the reward cards a dynamic duo for whatever reason, even though you can't go back and get them. They've done it twice this year already, so wouldn't be shocked to see it again. Um, this is another one that's not really a game changer, but it would make sense. Um, Dirk Nowitzki and Michael Finley. Wow, Dirk's super cheap. I mean, if we get Spotlight Sims, I'll definitely go pick him up. Um, yeah, Dirk and Pink Diamond Michael Finley from TTO. Uh, is this going to be an earth-shattering duo that people are going to use? No. Is it going to be nice if we end up getting, like, Spotlight Sims? Yeah, of course, for sure. Uh, another one that's not earth-shattering and no one's going to use outside of, like, maybe budget stuff is Ruby Trey Young and Amethyst John Collins. Is this one likely? Maybe not. I don't know. But it just seems like something 2K would do, so I don't know. I think a lot of the double-take guys are going to get them. Like, I think we're going to see one with Hito and Dwight Howard. Honestly, that one will be pretty good, because I like both those cards. You boost uh, Hito's defensive stats a little bit, he becomes a little bit more usable. We could see Sean Kemp and Patrick Ewing get him, just because they're both on the Magic. <laughs> that would be the dustiest old man duo possible. We could also see old, grumpy Gary Payton get one with this fat Sean Kemp, too. That would be... Oh, that's bad shaming. I can't do that to Sean Kemp. I'm sorry, Sean. Um, I don't know. Maybe. I think Pink Diamond Tracy McGrady gets one, though. Who's that with? I'm not sure. But they typically give the outdated T-Mac a duo at some point. They've done it like three years in a row. Or, well, two years in a row, sorry. Um, Grant Hill, maybe. Uh, I could see him doing it with Opal Yao, too, but I think that one's a little bit less likely. I mean, maybe they give one to Opal Yao and boost Opal Yao's three-point a little bit and his speed. Uh, that'd be pretty cool. And then T-Mac gets better defensive stats. I just wish they boosted badges. Like, they can do it, too, because some cards don't have certain badges, so they could put clamps on T-Mac. That would be great. Um, another one would be, like, where is he? Uh, Glitch Stockton would make sense. So I think we are going to see them kind of boost badges at some point, and they're just going to be badges that cards can't get. And this Carmelo. I don't know. Like I said, not an earth shadowing duo, but like when it comes to using those two guys in an all diamond challenge or something, sure. This is the one that's going to probably be the best, I think, which is Pink Diamond Paul George and not the right idol set. Pink Diamond Danny Granger. They did this last year with Opal George and Opal Granger, the Prime series. So once again, this one will actually be the one that's most usable. I would probably use this duo because uh, I like both of these cards. Um, Danny Granger is still one of my favorite cards in the game. I think this Rodman for sure gets one. Uh, whether that's with Pantheon, Scottie Pippen, or Pink Diamond, Jordan. We could also see Pantheon, Scottie Pippen, and Pink Diamond, Jordan get one themselves. Um, like I said, it's kind of hard to really tell, but I think we do definitely see that. Usually when 2K releases a newer version of a card, um, especially when we get into the Opal territory, they'll go back and hit the Pink Diamonds and the Diamonds with dynamic duos just to drive their price back up so that they can sell like a dynamic duo super pack that people will buy um trust me if you play 2k long enough you can kind of predict their patterns i'm sure someone in the comments will be like 2k you don't they wouldn't do that and yeah no they would and they will um either way i'm stoked for season five let me know what you guys think down in the comments like what do you think is coming in season five what do you think the tt triple threat etc all the rewards are going to be comment your choices down below 
I am doing another um, series of these squad tips videos later this week. It's going to be a special one. I'll make a video about it. Other than that, peace out, guys.